I, I just had a, a good talk with our team. I told them that uh, I didn't want them to lose sight of, of, of really what took place today. Um, you know, up until the fourth quarter when we started going for fourth downs, um, I thought they prepared well this week. I thought they played hard. Um, there's certainly things we need to continue to get better on, and it's really pretty simple. For us on offense, in the first half, when we're able to rush the ball, keep them off balance, mix in the pass, the play action, the run, and have some success running the ball, we're a much better team. Um, in the third quarter, um, we, we weren't able to maintain the run. Um, I thought we lost up front with uh, their front against ours. We became one-dimensional, and when we're, when we're one-dimensional, um, we're an average football team. Uh, defensively, I thought other than the first two drives, we went uh, the, the second half of the first quarter all the way through middle of the third quarter uh, and played excellent. Um, and then we started giving up some run. Uh, we let them run the ball on third and seven for a first down, I think third and 12, and then maybe third and 20 or something, I'm not sure. Uh, and that was disappointing for us. Uh, and then late in the game, when we, uh, as I said, when we're in an all pass situation, they're rushing three and dropping eight. Um, it's a difficult time for us. Um, so overall, um, you know, I'm disappointed for the players. Uh, we challenged them. We knew that West Virginia was playing good right now. Um, they got down early, came back, and, and had some fight to them. Uh, but we just couldn't get over that hump. Uh, we, we couldn't move the ball offensively in the third quarter, couldn't run the football, um, and it makes it difficult for us to, to score points uh, and certainly come back. And then I kind of think they, they had a feel that they thought that we couldn't move it and score. And so uh, they started to run the football and use the clock, which was smart on their part. So, um, you know, also shared with them that we have a game next Saturday. Uh, whether we like it or not, uh, we have to rally, stay together as a group, come back tomorrow and go to work. Mike, talk about the decision on the first drive of the game where you were moving it through the air and you decided to go for it on fourth down. Was that scripted all along? You were going to do it just to <coughs> fire up your team? Or what was the thought process there on that well, we thought we had a chance, uh, and um, at times uh, when you're in a position we are, you, you've got to hit a fourth down or so, and we were moving the ball and felt pretty good about it. Uh, the field position was a really long field goal or um, a punt that would maybe only gain you, you know, maybe 20 yards uh, unless you, uh, you know, you dropped them inside the 10, uh, which is a, uh, a little bit lower percentage. Uh, just, you know, try to get some momentum, try to get the game going. Can you describe some of the uh, some of the play calling on the touchdown drive and why it worked so efficiently? Uh, and, then the, and then the touchdown pass itself was really nice. Well, we ran the ball, John, a little bit, and because we were running the ball, it set up the reverse, and then we were able to play with a little tempo, and we were throwing the ball in the flat, and we hit a reverse, and um, then we caught him in man coverage. Some of the things that we had prepared for, um, and I know everybody thinks it's complicated, but it's really very simple. If if we're not running the ball effectively or even remotely. Uh, for three and a half to four yards of carry, then it becomes difficult for us to throw passes. And that's what happened to us in the second half. And then we get behind, it's really difficult because we're not, we're not going to be very good right now. Uh, we're a little bit limited in, in an eight-man drop. Mike, uh, one touchdown <coughs> in the last 10 quarters and the third down conversion wasn't very good. Is that alarming to you? Is that, do you blame that on inexperience? How would you... Well, everything offensively to me is alarming right now, but I also have to look at where we're at. Um, we have a quarterback that's inexperienced, and we have an offensive line that's that's young and inexperienced, and um, we're a little bit beat up at times and in places, and we're just trying to continue to push forward. We're certainly aware of it. We, we have to stay with some balance. What did you do after the first two drives? What, what happened defensively to slow them down and you know, they didn't really hurt you bad the rest of the game. Yeah, we, we gave up the big uh, – it's not the big one, but the post route for a touchdown. We should have had safety help. And um, 18 should have stayed on top of him. Uh, we didn't, and we didn't get safety help. So it was really just a matter of um, not being in the right spot. Uh, and from that point on, we were, did a better job of uh, being in, in the right spot and gaps, and we were sound. Um, but what's happening is, is – when you're limited in certain areas, you're not playing as good as you want to, you get exposed really fast. So then offensively, we start putting them back on the field. They get a little tired because they're on the field the entire time and, and they're pounding them with the running game. Uh, and the flip side of that is, is I'm sure they're saying they're struggling, they can't score any points. We're ahead by 17 or 10, I mean, I'm sorry, seven or 10. So we're just gonna keep pounding the ball and using the clock. Did you, whatever you did to slow White and Alford, mm -hmm. did that, 
Did that hurt you in defending the run, especially Some. in that third quarter? Sure. Some. Uh, you know, there's, there's give and take, you know, when you have a, a great receiver like that, we've had them here with, with Dez and, and Blackman and guys like that. And when they take them away, uh, you, sh you should be able to run the ball. You're, you're, uh, you're a half a guy to one guy less in run support when you're trying to defend a great player. So there's some give and take there. Um, uh, you know, you, you, uh, you want to make sure you don't get, get hurt um, uh, with the pass on a, uh, on a great player, but you also have to defend the run. So there's a little give and take. On the field goal, where it looked like the kicker was rolling forward a little bit at the snap, uh, they said they didn't see him move. <laughs> Mike, it, which I mean, I'm with you, but that you know that's not the reason we lost, but um, kind of a reset. Uh, five and three, pretty tough schedule going forward. You said you talked to the team, said like it or not, we have a game next week. So right. you not really concern yourself about wins and losses now. Just let's go get better because of what you have ahead of you. Well, we're always concerned about wins and losses. Um, nobody likes to lose more than me, and I've said that last week. And the team, okay? It's, you know, we, we're, we're in a society we live in, in our profession, in our world, college football, where people are evaluated by wins and losses. And um, so our, our guys, our players have to understand that um, us as a staff, myself, we're appreciative of what they put in during the week. But we also challenge them to come back and do the same thing this week. And um, the only thing that we can do is get ready for the next game. Um, we can correct mistakes um, and try to identify where their coaches coached better than us, try to identify where we were out of position, their players made plays and we didn't, try to put all that together, come up with a plan, turn it all around fast and get ready to go on the road and play a, you know, whatever top 10 team or whatever uh, they are at this time. Uh, and then just continue to move forward. It's so unusual to have this kind of heat at this time of year. I mean, apparently Hill had some issues. Uh, Tyreek had a few issues, but other than that, the heat, I don't think it was really a factor. You know, obviously it was, it was hot for both teams. Um, it, unusually hot, but I don't think that was a factor in the game. Was Aitman dinged up, Mike? <coughs> Excuse me? Was he dinged up today? It didn't seem like he was on the field. Yeah, a little bit, yeah. He'd been dinged up a little bit. He practiced most of the week, but he was uh, not all the week. Close to getting those defensive guys back? You guys keep asking me. I keep telling you. I, I, I hope. Um, it's just day to day. Whenever you have a foot injury like they have, um, I, I don't know what to tell you. I, I mean, I hope they come back, but uh, you just have to wait and see. I think they're trying hard to come back, but um, it would help just from a depth standpoint if we could get a couple guys back to give them a breather. Mike, two-thirds of the season in. Are you a little bit surprised that maybe this team has regressed a little bit, or have they? And how important is it to get ball eligible because of? Well, two things. First thing is, is regressed based on the teams we played. And I'm not so sure that we didn't play as good through three quarters against them as maybe we did three weeks ago. I, I don't know till I watch the tape. I'm not uh, trying to throw you under the bus there. Um, the only thing we need to worry about is the next game. And um, for us to worry about trying to um, get bowl eligible more than the next game, you know, it all kind of ties in together because if you win the next game, then you're bowl eligible. Everybody's aware of that. Um, what I'm looking for and what I want the staff to look for is the continued development of these players and bringing them along. And I'm trying to stress to you that it's not something that can just happen overnight. I wish it could. Uh, but we're going to try to bring them along and try to get them better and try to coach them and do everything that we can. Um, I'm hoping we can get a few players back um, to try to help out a little bit uh, depth standpoint and practice and games and things like that. But um, we'll, we will come up with guys that, are, that will travel to the next game and we'll play hard and we'll come up with plans and we'll move forward. Mike, we were having a hard time remem remembering if the players line up and sing the alma mater to the fans after every game, after losses as well, because I don't know why, but it stood out today that they didn't. Not if you lose. Not if you lose. Every time, not if you lose. Not if you lose. Okay. Jack's had a lot of balls at sale today. Is that just because of <coughs> the hurries, the faster speeds on the defense, or is he struggling to kind of get he, into the rhythm of the there game? Were, there were uh, two or three plays that were – issues with routes, runs versus coverages, throws, and then there were a couple where he had the ball high. He had to curl route early. I think it was the first half uh, with, with Shep, and he had him. He had a poor throw. 
Then he had another throw that wasn't good, and there was a couple times with some of the young receivers, they weren't in the spot that they, were, that they should have been. Just don't feel I, like I don't know. I didn't make. The, I didn't. I didn't set that standard. I just do what they tell me to do. It's a good question. Though. I like how you're trying to get off the game and let me talk about something else. You're usually like after. You're doing good. I mean, nice guy. Feel sorry so, for me. Where, where are you individually with this team? Are you shocked that you're five and three? Are you happy? Are you wanting to throw well, stuff? I, I mean, I'm. I'm disappointed for the players because there's a lot of work that goes in, just like every other. 127 or however many teams that play football every Saturday. And I want them to enjoy success. Uh, but uh, I've done this long enough now in 25 years and then 10 as a head coach to be able to understand where we're at. And, and I'm not sitting up here saying that we're young. I, I think that they, there's times we got out coached today. I think there's times that, that we had good, good, good coaching. Uh, there's times they made plays. There's times we didn't make plays. Um, on, on some of the short yardages offensively, we didn't convert. They made a play. They ran the ball twice, once for third and 12 and once for third and 20. Well, they made a play and we didn't. So when you struggle like we are now, you get exposed. And there's a lot of different questions. But me, I'm fine. I mean, I'm thrilled to be here. I love these kids. I like coaching them. Their attitude's good. Their effort's good. You know, there's a big picture here. You know, there's a, a, a really big scene involved in – uh, playing college football and being a part of this team, coaches and players. So I understand that and I see that. Um, I certainly understand all the frustration outside the program. Uh, people here want to win. They want to win right away. They don't care if you're young. They don't care if you're hurt. They don't care. And that's fine. That's the, the level that we've raised this program, and, and I'm okay with that. But I certainly see the big picture. Five years ago when you guys struggled offensively and you weren't getting touchdowns that you wanted, you, your response at that time was, really changed the culture offensively. Really completely changed it. So and I know you're not you can't do that in the span of three practice days, you know what I mean? But but I mean when you think big picture, do you foresee maybe another culture change or do you know that or do you feel like just all these circumstances have just ganged up on you? Well, I think there's some <laughs> circumstances that's ganged up on us that haven't helped us. Um, we're going through some adjustments right now. We're young in certain stages. Some of the experience we had on defense, we don't have some of those guys playing. That's part of a factor. But um, there's certainly not any time for us to try to change what we're doing and the culture with where we're at now. And, and again, you guys asked, I'm being real honest, the only thing we're concerned about is Saturday because we can't do anything else about it. So. We have basic fundamentals in, kicking, in the kicking game, uh, in offense and defense that we have to continue to get better at to develop these younger players and some of the guys that are new um, while also keeping them fresh and healthy and try to get them ready for the next, great, next game. Um, I will say that I thought our, our special teams, our young guys that are on our coverage units continue to get better and improve. Uh, they, they worked really hard and uh, they're doing a better job of covering kicks and punts and things like that where a month ago we were terrible at that. And, and so they're, they're progressing a little bit. Is it harder for you to instill in your younger guys to see the bigger picture? I mean, do you sense the frustration amongst them, or are they kind of the same? Like, they understand that they need to be patient with the process and just work on getting better week in and week out? Well, they're young people, and um, they're very prideful. And so when they leave this facility, and when they go over to the apartments, when they go to class, when they're with their friends, the communication that takes place on social networking, they see that and it hurts them because they have a lot of pride, they're athletes. So uh, <clears throat> we talk to them about that and try to teach them life lessons, okay? And this is all part of it. Um, nobody likes it, it's, it's not any fun, but there's only one thing you can do. You stay together as a group, we don't point fingers, you keep practicing, try to get ready for the next game. And I'm, I'm really pleased with the veteran players we have and how they've helped the younger players. Don't get me wrong, they're frustrated. They get frustrated, that's life. That's what young kids do, young people do that. As adults and coaches, we're supposed to be more mature and bring them along. And that's what we're doing right now. How disappointing is it, Mike, during the week to have a couple of guys go get in, in trouble off the field? Well, that's disappointing to us and they don't play. If guys choose to uh, make a decision, then <clears throat> they don't play. And so, um, and they know that, okay? We don't talk about things like that public publicly. That's something we handle internally, but um, it disappoints us and me 
um, when guys make poor decisions because I don't think that's the best decision for them in their future. Um, and so they've made a poor decision, and when that happens, you don't play. Tonight, your old line, how'd you feel like they played both opening running lines and protecting that? I thought up, way, up through the about 10 minutes ago in the third quarter, they played pretty good. And then we stopped, uh, and we weren't as effective running the ball. There were a couple times we gave up some protection issues. We had some protection issues, but I thought overall we protected okay. Uh, good enough to throw the ball downfield. Bad news was they were in drop eight. They had eight people covering the passes, and there's not really anywhere to throw the ball. They've actually made look like some gains in the running game and protection those guys. I mean, is that something you can build on going down the stretch? Sure. We, do, we just keep working with them. And, uh, you know, we get, we get uh, 18 minutes of individual. Uh, on Tuesday, and we get X number of team plays and, and inside run plays. And then on Wednesday, you get uh, 14 minutes individual and X number of team and inside, and then you got to get ready to play. So it's just kind of a slow process, and uh, you can't just throw them out there for three hours on Tuesday and, and beat them till their shoulders hurt. Or ultimately, it won't be very good for our team. Mike, where does uh, leadership come from on this, on this team among the players? Because if you lose 28 seniors, is it that easy to just reload and say, okay, now you're a leader and you're a leader and you're a leader? No. Can you kind of describe how that situation no, you, works you, and how it's working uh, against you guys? You, you develop that. And, and as I said, I'm pleased with the veteran players that we have on the team. Um, there's not as many of them as what we've had. And that leadership has to – it starts with me, and then it goes to our coaches, and then we instill it in our players. But when you asked about the players, um, they have to learn and do that on their own. And the majority of that takes place in practice this week, in the apartments tonight, in the weight room this week, and then in games when you get behind. Because everybody can be a, a good guy and have lots of fun when you're winning. It's adversity and shows the true, true sign of who we are and what kind of character we have. And unfortunately, we're, we're faced with it right now. But uh, I don't see anybody in there that, that I'm concerned with. Good? All right, guys, thanks.